Hi guys, this is the Clear English Corner, and I'm Keenan, your personal American English pronunciation coach. In this lesson, we're talking about something you really have to do if you truly want to sound more natural and native in your spoken English. You have to use contractions. I know, it sounds counterintuitive, but using contractions is super important to achieving the natural rhythm and flow you're looking for in your spoken English. You're probably thinking, but Keenan, if I take sounds out of words and deliberately shorten them, isn't that gonna make me harder to understand? And truly, the answer is no, if your audience is primarily native English speakers. Native speakers use contractions all the time. And when you don't use contractions, it's an immediate tell that English is not your first language. I am excited and she is the best. Don't flow as well as I'm excited and she's the best. So there's a lot of contractions in English and it gets overwhelming to try to learn all these contractions and reductions. So let's narrow it down to the contractions that are most common. Over the next few lessons, we're going to practice the most common contractions together. And these are the ones I would focus on first. These are the ones that occur most often. And in this lesson, we're going to start with the most common contractions, the present form of the verb to be, or is, are, and am. All right, so diving in with is, because seriously, if you're going to contract any word in your spoken English, this should be the one. Pretty much any time this word is coming in the middle of a sentence, you're going to use it in contracted form, unless you're trying to emphasize something, a lot of times agreeing or confirming something. This is an incredible view. I think he is a little worried about it. So let's practice contracting is with pronouns. All right, so he is becomes he's, he's. She is becomes she's, she's. And it is becomes it's, it's. You'll notice there's two different sounds to this apostrophe S. After the vowel sound E in he and she, because it's voiced, vowels are always voiced, the S sounds like z, he's she's. After the t, t, t in it's, which is a voiceless sound, the apostrophe s sounds like s, it's, it's. In general, this distinction happens when the contracted is comes after a p, t, k, or th. It sounds like s, and when it comes after a voiced sound, it sounds like z. Now I know some of you are out there saying, but Keenan, it doesn't always sound like z after a voiced consonant. Friends, my friend's very dependable. Labs, the lab's always open. Rugs, that rug's really soft. And you know what? You are right. There isn't always a distinctive z hum when that s comes after a voice consonant. So try this. Don't worry so much about whether or not you're giving voice to the s or z. Just try to use the contracted form. And as you get better at this, the sound will flow more naturally. All right, so let's practice. He is he's, he's, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. I think he's moving to the East Coast. I think he's moving to the East Coast. She thinks he's going to propose. She thinks he's going to propose. He's among our top performers. He's among our top performers. He's not sure he's going to make it. Also, notice how going to becomes gonna. He's not sure he's going to make it. She is, she's, she's. She's the head of the department. She's the head of the department. She's going to run for office. 
She's going to run for office. Everyone says she's the best. Everyone says she's the best. I know she's booked on Friday. I know she's booked on Friday. She's supposed to be here, but she's running late. She's supposed to be here, but she's running late. Awesome. Let's try. It is becomes it's. It's. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day. It's about time to get going. It's about time to get going. Do you think it's okay to start without him? Do you think it's okay to start without him? We know it's important to you. We know it's important to you. It's really not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. The word is is also contracted in question forms. So let's practice is with some question words as well. Let's start with who is. Who is becomes whose. Whose. Who's this? Who's this? Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Do you know who's next? Do you know who's next? What is becomes what's. What's. What's the point? What's the point? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Do you know what's for lunch? Do you know what's for lunch? When is becomes wins. Wins. When's the party? When's the party? When's she supposed to be here? When's she supposed to be here? When's a good time to call? When's a good time to call? Where is becomes where's. Where's. Where's your office? Where's your office? Where's the restroom? Where's the restroom? Where's the conference this year? Where's the conference this year? Why is becomes wise. Wise. Just like you might describe someone as being very wise. Sounds the same. Wise. Why is it so dark in here? Why is it so dark in here? Why is this bill so high? Why is this bill so high? Why is there water all over the floor? Why is there water all over the floor? And how is becomes how's. How's. How's it going? How's it going? How's that going to work? How's that going to work? How's your mom doing? How's your mom doing? All right, next up, let's practice with contracting the word are. Starting first with you are. Now you are can become your, your, more fully pronounced, but more often than not, it's going to reduce down to your, your. Let me know if you're interested. Let me know if you're interested. I think you're next. I think you're next. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're the first one here. You're the first one here. You know you're always welcome. You know you're always welcome. They are can become their, but again, more often than not, this word is going to reduce to their, their. I think they're going to like it. I think they're going to like it. They're stopping by on their way home. They're stopping by on their way home. They're considering going a different route. They're considering going a different route. I don't think they're ever going to leave. I don't think they're ever going to leave. I hope they're ready. I hope they're ready. And we are. We are can become we're, we're, but most of the time this word's going to reduce to were, were, sounding just like this word, were. I wonder what we're going to do. I wonder what we're going to do. We're about out of time. We're about out of time. It looks like we're going to win. It looks like we're going to win. I think we're too late. I think we're too late. We're planning a little get together. We're planning a little get together. Okay, and while we're on the subject, let's talk about there. There is becomes theirs. Theirs. There's a new movie I want to see. There's a new movie I want to see. I don't think there's any chance. I don't think there's any chance. Do you think there's any left? Do you think there's any left? Now, I know some of you have noticed that a lot of times, instead of saying there are, there are, there are, native speakers will say theirs. It's not grammatically correct, right? It should be 
there are some steaks in the freezer. It's not, there is some steaks in the freezer. So why do native speakers say there's some steaks in the freezer? Because it's super hard to say there are, there are. It's right up there with rural and juror. So in most cases, we're just not gonna say it. So even though technically it's grammatically incorrect, there's some steaks in the freezer. All right, I'm glad we talked about that. All right, so last but not least, let's talk about am. This little word that comes after the pronoun I. When it's in the middle of a phrase, you want to contract this combination. Unless, again, you're trying to emphasize something. I am a little worn out. I am on the committee. So I am becomes I'm. I'm. I'm really interested in the position. I'm really interested in the position. I'm from the United States. I'm from the United States. I'm going to Colorado next week. I'm going to Colorado next week. I'm sure she didn't mean it. I'm sure she didn't mean it. I'm not sure I'm ready for this. I'm not sure I'm ready for this. All right, so there you have it. One final note in this lesson. You can't use these contracted forms at the end of a sentence or standing alone by themselves. So, I think he is does not become I think he's. And we don't know where she is can't become we don't know where she's. And if someone asks, are you coming to the party? You can't answer I'm. Just wanna make sure we clear that up. All right, if you're feeling like you need a little bit more practice with these contractions, you know I've got you covered. Visit the link in the video description to download your PDF file that has all of the contractions we've practiced, all of their IPA transcriptions, their reduced forms, and the practice sentences from the lesson. So be sure to grab that. It'll be really helpful as you work through the lesson a few more times. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of the lessons that are coming from the Clear English Corner. As always, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.